GM, welcome to the Nomi Space podcast, the show about Bitcoin art, ordinals, and Web3 tech. I'm your host, Nomi, an artist, designer, and founder. Here, I meet with the best people in the space to discuss the technologies that complement the art. Our today's guest is Tosio, the founder of an 8K Bitcoin whale collection that was traded by September 2023 with a total volume of 13.4 BTC and has 4.2K unique owners. It's a PFP collection successfully launched on Ordinals. So let's dive deep into the main keys to success and the founder's perspective on Bitcoin art. GM Tosio, thank you so much for joining me in this podcast. I'm super passionate about your whales collection and you as a founder, you know, how you lead the space. So I'm happy to have you on this episode. How are you doing today? Doing good. Thanks for having me here, Nomi. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for coming. It's a pleasure. Please share with me about your whales collection and why did you start it on Ordinals? Definitely. So uh, originally for the whales, they weren't supposed to be Bitcoin whales, essentially. It was supposed to be a different avatar or digital identity however you want to call it then uh, i believe it was last week of january or first week of february wherein i watched a video from udi so you know everyone everyone who knows him he's the founder of taproot wizard so the moment i realized how it's better here in ordinals compared to traditional nfts you know once you understood uh, true immutability and permanence as well as scarcity that it all makes sense to start a collection here in bitcoin ordinals yeah that's so true once you understand like why bitcoin is better than any other blockchain it's kind of obvious whatever the main points for you how can you describe why is it better I would say it's because uh, people have a misconception when it comes to NFTs. Like, for example, for Ordinal, it's actually called digital artifacts, you know, in correlation to NFTs. And, you know, everything is stored on chain for digital artifacts or quote unquote uh, NFTs on Bitcoin. But with NFTs on different chains, such as from Solana or Ethereum, they're stored in IPFS servers such as Amazon or Google. You know, people don't know that it comes with risk. Like we're in what happens if that certain location where that servers are being hosted disappears or what if there's a catastrophe that happened in that specific locations? Does that mean that they're going to say goodbye to their precious uh, JPEGs? You know, things like that they need to consider as well as the risk of the metadata getting changed without their approval. Yeah, that's so true. The architecture of Bitcoin ordinals is so much different. We don't have smart contracts that can be changed and we don't have any IPFS links. So like all data is stored on chain and that's why it makes really unique those pieces. They would never be lost. They are just on Bitcoin itself. And that makes me passionate as well about Bitcoin ordinals. Please share with me your collection. I would love to see the designs and what was the main goal in the design, in the art? Because for me as an artist, I'm always interested in how founders come up with the designs with art and what do they want to share through this art. Bitcoin whales, it's a really cool image of a person who is successful, right? And I would love to dive deep into this concept with you. Oh yeah, definitely. So let me share my screen. Yeah, this is our website. So basically, we went with a pixel art design here. At that time, there were no recursive inscriptions. And inscribing higher resolution for an artwork would cost you a lot of money. And that's why we stick with what we knew around that time, which was pixel artwork, which fit the narrative as well. Because when I found out about Ordinals, my first Ordinal, I would say, that I got into or a community I got into was Bitcoin Punks. So, uh, you know, there was some inspiration through that. And that's the reason why we went with the pixel artwork. They're looking good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) So if you notice, like, they have different backgrounds here. And we went with an orange and a yellow background for us. 
the yellow background symbolizes the 2010 logo of Bitcoin. That's why we have it as this, as part of our color palette. Mm -hmm. And essentially for the orange one, we slightly or loosely have a different approach to it, but it symbolizes the current logo of Bitcoin, which is the orange one. But we often see a different hue of orange when it comes to different collections. Of course, you know, as a brand or a collection, you want to stand out from the others. We, you know, you, you can't just simply have the same color of orange or shade of orange like the other collections out there. So yeah, that was so our true. approach there. Yeah. The art is amazing. Uh, I haven't looked into all of them, but right now, like, I see how much detail they are and the color palette is special. You know, when you talk, I really can imagine that those whales are yours, you know, as a founder, because this representation of your energy somehow, you know, because the colors are so smooth and calm and at the same time, all the images with details so it's unique. It's unique as an art collection. And congratulations with creating this amazing art on chain. Thank you so much. And, you know, like, uh, I guess uh, in a way, uh, these whales would serve as a digital identity for every individual out there. And, I, you know, I do hope that they find their the right whale for them. So Tosia, please share what is the rarity of those whales? How did you come up with the rarity? Because the 10,000 collection is the whole supply. So how many rare pieces do you have? Basically, we have a spreadsheet wherein we decided how many rares. Like for example, for for a wizard whale, like we would imagine that there's only, let's say, 100 of these for the whole collection. Mm -hmm. We had this idea wherein... Despite there's a rarity count on these whales, like they're re relying on gamma for the rarity. Wait, is it the toilet paper on the top oh. of the whale inscription? Yeah, this one. Yeah, that's a toilet paper, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. it, it was inspired from games. Like, you know, like even this one, look, that's a oh, scramble. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, a, that's an egg right there. And we even have this one, a mini me of a whale. Yeah, that's cute. Uh, yeah. So how did you allocate those? Were they like randomized picked uh, by the holders? Uh, this was randomized by the team. So basically, they were they weren't pre-inscribed, mm -hmm. but we had the whole collection ready. So basically, we started with with eight K, and you know the whole community is is aware that the goal is that the team has. 2,000 whales and we're not inscribing them until we hit a certain milestone you know we would want our collection to have an inscription range that would start from inscription sub 100k to 100 million so that's what we're going for as well for us it symbolizes that bitcoin whales is curating for people of any age as well as for everyone we haven't changed this <laughs> Since we haven't hit 100 million inscriptions, we're at 31 million inscriptions, I think, at this point, right? Yeah. The inscriptions are cool, right? Because they have numbers. Mm -hmm. So interesting to notice the history, right? Because with the numbers, it goes the time when it was inscribed. So for me, it's always interesting to see the history of art, how we developed it as a community. So that really inspires me the most. Yeah. And, you know, like if people go to Ord.io, they get to see the most upvoted whale mm -hmm. there. And actually not only the most upvoted whale, but also the most upvoted inscription of all time in, in this platform, which is this one. So this one is actually Satoshi Nakamoto right here. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Oh, 1.8K. Wow. Yeah. So, Bravo. Yeah. <laughs> So we had this for a while now. We got it from February 14th. It's been a while, wow, 213 days ago. Ah, yeah, yeah then... that's the cool thing of being early, right? Like mm -hmm. February, let's fucking go. Yeah. 
So see, please share with me your future plans. I know you're rolling step by step with the comics. I would love to to know more about it. And if you can share, yeah, maybe your Twitter would love like to hear your plans for the comics. And do you want to like launch the comic book? Oh yeah, definitely. So we launched these comics two weeks ago. It was inspired from the little hotler. It's for people of any ages. Like it's easy to digest. I think you know when it comes to mass adoption or onboarding people into Bitcoin or even crypto overall or Web three, it's important to make sure that people are mindlessly scrolling to their timeline like this, and you have like less than a few seconds or maybe you know three three seconds to get their attentions, and you need to deliver the message right off the bat. So if you look into this. It's either you you're able to provide the message or the lesson within that comic through <laughs> words key, or, I see. <laughs> yeah yeah you know like through words or emotions yeah of the yeah. whales like for example uh this one was uh yeah this one was yesterday so over here we didn't provide any dialogue here but people can understand what hodling or holding Bitcoin is you know so yeah sure. Not only motion picture can express this, but also images. Because you know, before motion picture started, you know, the, those silent films, people were expressing everything through pictures. So that that's uh, how we, we're navigating here with our comics right here. I think this one is a good one too, because we're trying to represent the risk that comes with NFTs here in Marin. If it's on IPFS, this is what the they could experience in the future if things go wrong and for ordinals it's on chain it's amazing look it's the best what i've seen so far we don't have so many uh, educational movements in the ordinal space especially through art so that's why when you started comics for me it's really amazing because really people of different age can connect to this even like a small age to understand what's the differences and why bitcoin ordinals are beneficial right and it's not only about Bitcoin ordinals. I see you have what's the holding, right? Investing in Bitcoin. So I see from every picture positive feedback that I can connect to. And that way I can connect to crypto on a positive other way, right? So like Because some people see crypto as like sometimes negative because we have so many like different news and but with this positivity you know with this cartoonish expression of crypto bitcoin of ordinals it feels cool it feels like i want to connect i want to be a part of it i want to figure out at least what the bitcoin ordinals are and uh, then if i like it maybe i would try it right yeah that's true and uh, i actually spoke to my patient yesterday so i was at IRL work yesterday so I asked I asked her like what's her initial impression of Bitcoin when she first heard it and yeah. you know she said right off the bat that it's something daunting or scary then afterwards I showed these comics that I'm working on you know I showed I showed it to my patient <laughs> well yeah, yeah. it wasn't work and she said that for her it's uh more easier to understand and I guess that we also have to factor in that most of the individuals are visual learners compared to audio listeners. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because for me, I'm a visual learner. I, I just learn fast through visual. So in that way, you know, it doesn't have to be related to Bitcoin all the time. Like we can express it in a subtle way. Let's say two whales in a grocery store and you would show it briefly that they're paying in Bitcoin. Things like that, we have to make it simple or relatable to to people outside of Web3 or crypto. That's how we actually get their motivation or their curiosity. Because once they get curious and they get motivated, that's game over. You know, like they're just going to fall into the rabbit hole, just like how all of us started in crypto. Yeah, sure. First, like seeing the purpose, why we do this, and then connect through art, through being a holder, through being a part of the community. And that makes feel people that they're a part of this crypto experience together. And uh, after that, they would be able to invest more and really like dive into different aspects of NFTs in general and ordinals. <laughs> people coming from different blockchains to the ordinals right now, 
And I want everyone to see the benefits and to bring more people into our ordinal space. Thank you, Tosia, for sharing. I really enjoy diving into art, into what are you building right now? What are you cooking? I really see that the art aspect is playing the main role in your ordinals movement. And please share the final thoughts that somehow you want to inspire people to move to ordinals and move to maybe Web3 space. If you have any recommendations how people can start, I would be happy to listen your thoughts about it. Yeah, and, you know, like for individuals who want to get started on ordinals, I would say they just need to listen to spaces, you know, X spaces or quote unquote Twitter. Because uh, this is what I've noticed. Like before I started Twitter, I mostly learned about everything, you know, about crypto through YouTube. Then I realized that the alpha or the news would actually start from Twitter before it comes to YouTube. <laughs> And what I would say, just get involved. You don't have to be in a certain committee. You don't have to purchase an ordinal right off the bat. You know, just be immersed in spaces. And let's say if you if somebody has a question, they just have to speak up. Because I think most of the spaces that we have, you know, like we often uh, let the speakers speak up. Because uh, at the end of the day, I think it, it when it comes to community building, it's important to paint the picture for them as well as amplify their voices, you know, let them voice out. Yeah, that's that's what I think as well. Like connection through Twitter is number one thing because every founder in the ordinal space is really open and we have a lot of really cool spaces right now. Like it's a solid community. And if anyone has a question, <laughs> we answer, you know, straight away and that there is no barrier to enter and to mm-hmm. ask. And uh, that's what I enjoy as well. You know, when those people are super open and we are here to build and to really show the value instead of get the profit from others. So that's why it feels good to me. And uh, I'm happy that uh, we connected through ordinals. For me, this connection is really like part of my life right now and supporting each other that's what makes my building experience much more valuable thank you so much for being a part of this podcast it was a pleasure speaking to you and just going through collection thank you for joining me today oh yeah definitely and thank you for having me here Thank you for watching the Nomi podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, put your like, subscribe to my channel, and share with friends what I'm cooking here. I appreciate the feedback and questions in the comments below. Follow me on Twitter, Nomi underscore NFT, and see you in the next episode.